So today in the Hush Money trial, folks, we had tons of drama. We had lots of drama. And, you know, I'm not saying anything that you you probably don't already realize, but drama tends to follow Donald Trump no matter where he goes. And the one theme about what happened today, folks, that I got, and I listened to it longer than I should have, and the one thing that I can tell you about is that the whole event of this trial just seems to be a bunch of writhing snakes around Donald Trump. I mean, just a bunch of writhing snakes. And the, the three points that I want to make today, the three main things that happened um, where they talked about the one and a half minute phone call that Michael Cohen had with Keith Schiller and the defense is trying to say, you know, you never talked about the hush money payments. That was one of them. The other one is that Michael Cohen skimmed some money off of Donald Trump. And then lastly, we had Bob Costello. I mean, it, it really is. It's like something out of Abbott and Costello. You know, it's just just appropriate. But here's how it started with Donald Trump, folks. And this is when he arrived at the courtroom. Of course, he's going to complain about a cold courtroom, right? We're here about an hour early today. I was supposed to be making a speech for political purposes. I'm not allowed to very unfair i mean the cold room cold courtroom is unfair i mean what is it the the part where he says he has they have no case because they have no crime donald trump the whole pin of this the whole bedrock of his argument is that he never had an affair with stormy daniels and i i don't know who believes donald trump when he says that i really don't because I believe what Stormy Daniels said, you know, long story made short. I mean, slapping him on the fanny with the magazine. I mean, the whole nine yards. I believe it. It's sad. It's disgusting. But I believe all of which he said. And I, I think most Americans actually believe it. And the ones that are in the Trump camp just don't care about it. <laughs> and the rest of us are just like, you know, still in shock about, you know, the, the drama in this whole thing. And so what his whole premise here is that he never did that. So the rest of it, you know, if he paid someone money like Stormy Daniels, it doesn't matter because there was no crime because nothing ever happened. I mean, who pays somebody if there's not a reason for it? Why would you, Donald Trump, why would you pay Stormy Daniels $130,000 if there was no reason to do that? Just, just to make her quiet? Just to make her day? No, it's because something happened. I mean, the whole thing... It, the mentality gives me a headache, you know, with Donald Trump. It really does. So, folks, the the one thing that they talked about today was the um, the drama with the one and a half minute phone call. So, Michael Cohen says that he called Keith Schiller, who is Trump's bodyguard, and uh, basically told him about the hush money payments and you know it, that it was done, that he made the payments. And the defense said, no, you did not talk about that because the preceding text that you sent to Keith Schiller talked about a 14-year-old who was prank calling you and you needed help with that. But the prosecution pointed out today that there is video that's on C-SPAN that shows Keith Schiller with Donald Trump five minutes after that call was made. So it's not unlikely that Michael Cohen did talk to Keith Schiller and then Trump got on the phone and he said, you know what, the hush money, hush money payment has been made. And that was the point that the prosecution made today. So they kind of drilled holes in that whole thing that, no, you didn't even talk about this to Donald Trump. The second thing was that Michael Cohen evidently skimmed, I think it was $30,000 off of a payment that was made in addition to the, the hush money that was rolled up into it. And get this, folks, the $30,000 that Michael Cohen skimmed off of it was destined for a company called Redfinch. And I've got to show you this. Take a look at this. So I know a lot of you were out there saying, who in the hell is Redfinch? So Trump was reimbursed $50,000 to pay Redfinch, a tech company, uh, hired to rig a CNBC poll on the most famous businessman over the last century, Donald Trump, of course, even though he only came in ninth in the poll. 
So Donald Trump was trying to rig a poll. That's that's where the $50,000 was supposed to go. And it was wrapped in to Michael Cohen's payment of, what, $420,000 because, of course, Michael Cohen fixes things for Donald Trump. But it's so sleazy. So it's just like a bunch of, you know, ugh, it's it's just a bunch of writhing snakes, you know, when you get into this, folks. So that's what the Red Finch money was about. So Michael Cohen said to Red Finch, um, here's your 20 grand. And then he kept the 30. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sneaky. I, and, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know. I was going to say in, in Michael Cohen's defense, but in reality, here's what Michael Cohen had to go through. So for a year and a half, he fi- refinanced his home to get the $130,000 to pay off Stormy Daniels, and he's making payments on that. He had all the the crap that he had to deal with in, in getting the loan. I mean, it's a major lift for him to go out. I mean, can you imagine mortgaging your home to the tune of $130,000 so you could get hush money to pay Stormy Daniels? I mean, just imagine. I, I mean, no, I would not do that. Nobody else would either, but Cohen did. And Trump made him sit with it for what, a year and a half? I mean, nice guy, right? And then on top of it, Donald Trump doesn't give him the bonus that he got last year after doing all of this crap. Donald Trump didn't give him the bonus. So Michael Cohen's like, you know what? Screw you. That 50 grand that uh, was wrapped up for Red Finch to kind of fix and and rig the poll, I'm only going to give him 20 and I'm going to keep the 30. And here's what CNN said about it, folks. So it that's the short end of it. This is a little more convoluted, but here's what CNN said. He took tens of thousands of dollars. He might have expected that, yeah, maybe he took a couple grand. But to take $30,000 and then to allow Todd Blanche on cross-examination to get Cohen to admit that he stole from the Trump organization, that allowed Todd Blanche to land a punch that the prosecutors really could have staved off if they had gotten out ahead of this. Now, when they had a chance to go back at Cohen, uh, he had a chance to explain it. He said, quote, I was angered because of the reduction in the bonus. He was upset about the amount of his bonus that year. And so I just felt like it was almost like self-help. I wasn't going to let him have the benefit of this way as well. I wasn't going to correct the conversation I was having with Alan Weisselberg. It's just talking about when they, they sketched out those notes about how he would be paid $420,000. I had not only protected him, Trump, to the best that I could, but I had also laid out the money to Red Finch a year and a half earlier and had, again, $130,000 to have my bonus cut by two-thirds was very upsetting, to say the least. So not exactly uh, a perfect English there, but what Cohen seems to be saying is that he felt he was entitled to steal this money from the Trump organization. Not a great moment for prosecutors. They should have gotten out ahead of this, whether this will sink their case. I mean, it just depends how the jury sees this. So that's what Michael Cohen said on the stand, folks. And and basically... um, you know, he, he was just kind of screwing over Donald Trump because at that point, I think he was just kind of over it. I mean, can you imagine having to sit on $130,000 for a year and a half and make payments on it, you know, trying to get Donald Trump to pay it? I mean, it's insane. So the question really is, did that damage Michael Cohen's testimony? I don't think it did. I don't think it did because I, I think that this is the way life is with Donald Trump. You know, I mean... It, this, this is the way it is. I mean, Donald Trump doesn't seem to pay people, you know, what they're owed. Um, and as proof of that, Bob Costello came on a little bit later. Um, and the, the defense brought Bob Costello out to try to discredit Michael Cohen. And get this, Bob Costello is Rudy Giuliani's attorney. And Rudy Giuliani and Trump said that he would pay for Rudy Giuliani's legal fees. And Bob Costello heard that and said, okay, great. Well, he's owed $2 million. So here it is again. Donald Trump has not paid for Rudy Giuliani's legal fees, and Bob Costello hasn't been paid. So in walks Bob Costello into the courtroom, and folks, he's, he's doing stuff like this to the judge. He's sighing when he's talking, and you know the prosecution objects to something. Bob Costello was sitting there sighing. He says at one point, Jesus, you know, right in front of the judge, when the judge is actually talking to the attorneys and, you know, trying to work through his testimony, and then he says, ridiculous, and then he gives the judge the side eye. The judge kicks everybody out of the courtroom and, and has some stern words for Bob Costello. And 
for the the amount of disrespect and lack of decorum that Bob Costello had. And at the end of the day, folks, he just basically said that Michael Cohen is somebody that you you can't trust. And his basis for saying that was that he was talking on the phone to Michael Cohen several times uh, as some sort of an attorney, but there's no attorney-client privilege because they didn't sign a retainer. I mean, oh my God, (laughs) it's insane. But a bunch of snakes, you know, at the end of the day, this is what you get when when you've got someone like Trump, folks, is just this writhing, you know, mass of entanglement and people not getting paid emotions people getting mad you know this kind of i mean it's it it just it's just like a storm cloud that follows donald trump but the key point here is that the prosecution shot holes into that first one and a half minute phone call that yes you know obviously michael cohen could have talked to donald trump because he was standing right there with keith schiller and this payment you know, Michael Cohen skimming off $30,000. Do you think it matters? Do you think the jury cares? Does it discredit what he said? Does it discredit what Stormy Daniels said? My God, probably not. And all this is going to start up again tomorrow, folks. Till then.